Hi, I'm Kimberly Jolly from the Fat Quarter Shop, and I'm here with Stacy East Shoe, and she's going to show us how to make her cute kitty catty bag, and you can find the instructions to make the actual bag on her blog. It's so cute. You can put your needles, your thread, your binding clips, super cute, and today what we're going to do is show you how to personalize your bag and how to embroider the face and how to make this cute little mouse. So let's get started. So, to get started, we cut out our face for the cat uh, in a mochi linen off of my pattern, like this. And then, I hand drew the face onto the mochi linen. There's several ways to transfer uh, artwork onto your fabric to embroider. There's all kinds of products out there now nowadays, iron-ons. Uh, kind of tracing paper and you can stitch on top of the tracing paper but for today I actually just hand drew it with a pencil I wanted it to be very naive and sweet so that's the direction I went into we're going to start with the eyes first and I have my dark burgundy and basically it's a running stitch and I start at the very beginning here and then I just work my way across and then go to the next eye we have a knot at the end of our embroidery thread and we'll put it started at the end there like so and put it in and just basically follow follow your artwork and you're more than welcome to add extra design to the fabric um, you can even embroider like the word meow on there could be really cute but make it your own what's the fun about this this little tote On the embroidery, I'm using six strands. I like the embroidery to be thick on this because it is a heavier weight fabric and it holds up a little better. It shows up more. And at this point, I usually just, because the fabric is so thick, um, I am just going to take the thread across and finish the other eye. If the fabric were lighter, like a cream and not the linen, I would probably stop with the eye and, and knot it and then start again on the other side. But because it's so thick, you're not going to be really see that string go across or the embroidery thread go across. I'm going to take it across. One thing to keep in mind though is not to pull it too much so if you get this then it gets tight. You just make sure it lies flat. I'm going to keep you continue with the next eye. What I love about this is that the illustration is not perfect. It's not symmetrical and it's not supposed to be. It's, it's much more naive and sweet. So don't get stressed out about having it absolutely perfect. Okay, we're coming to the end here. Doing the last stitch. And I think it's turning out really cute so far. We got our little eyes with their eyelashes. We turn it around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to end it by putting it through a loop here. And wrapping it around this guy. I do it twice. You just have to watch out. It doesn't get knotted. There we go. Done. Take your little scissors, 
snip it and you have the eyes so next we'll work on the cute little mouth and for that one we're you're using a darker um, well lighter than the burgundy but kind of a medium color pink and so what we do again we start here This is kind of a satin stitch, so you have to run the stitches close together. And again, make sure that it doesn't wrinkle up because there is quite a bit of space there. And then you want to get right, right next to that next stitch. Pretty close. And because this is six strands of embroidery thread, it is a little thicker. So it's a little easier that way. I'm getting a little tangled up here. Make sure it's clean back there. And we'll put it right next. And what we're going to gradually do is we want to bring it narrower as we go down. So because we're slowly narrowing at the bottom of the kitty's nose. There, and then you start with the running stitch again. To create the little mouth. Again, because this mochi linen is pretty thick, we can just work our way back across. Just make sure it's flat. Move to the other side. Okay. We'll do the last stitch. Now. And again, we'll do the same thing we did with the eyes. We'll turn it over. Put your needle through one of the loops in the back. And through. Loop it twice. Pull. And clip. Ah. It's really starting to look like a little kitty cat. I'm so excited. Now the last thing we need to do is put those little whiskers on. And then this guy is ready to go. So we're using a lighter pink for this. You can use any color you'd like, though. You can use a cream, whatever works for you. So we put that through. And these I just do straight across, uh, just a simple long stitch. Again, you just have to be careful to make sure it's flat. And last stitch. Turn this guy around. It's a little messy back here, but you only see the front anyway, so it's all good. There's your face. It's a kitty. The instructions for the kitty caddy as well as the templates are on my blog. Now let's create this cute little mouse pin cushion to go with it. 
So now we're going to start on our cute little mouse pin cushion. I have all the pieces laid out and the pattern will be on my blog. So I have my little ears, the top of my body, the bottom, and the face. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to pin our pieces together for our ears. And we want to put, so I want the dark pink on the back of the ear and I want the cute little kitties inside the ear and so I will pin the right sides together like so for both ears and what we're going to do is we're going to sew around the curved portion but leave this little bottom area open so we can turn it inside out and it might seem a little scary sewing these little pieces but you just take it slow and um, it works out fine. So there's one ear. This is the other. I just put three pins there. And then we have uh, our top portion of our body. We have two pieces. You can either use the same fabric for both pieces or you can mix it up and make it look a little bit more patchworky um, by using two different fabrics. So we'll pin the long straight edge together and we're going to sew that together. Okay, we have all these pieces sewn together. We can also, we have our little head here. And as you can notice, it's empty right now. But on our little mouse, he has two little French knot eyes. And so before we get sewing on this, we can actually um, put our little eyes on here quickly. And so what I do, and you can use transfer paper or tracing paper, I just kind of just guesstimate of where I think the little mouse's eyes kind of in the center and I put a little pencil mark right there again doesn't have to be perfect but you just want to make sure it's within the seam allowance here and here we're gonna do um, a 1 4 inch seam allowance when we're sewing this little guy together so now we're going to put his little eyes and what I use is a French knot for his eyes so I've got my a uh, six strand embroidery thread. I like it thick so you can see those little guys pop out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in from the bottom and then French knots are kind of fun. It's just amazing how it works. So I have it coming up. I have my needle. I wrap it once around my needle and then I put the needle back in through the bottom as close to that first stitch as I possibly can without going through the same hole that I came up through. And then I hold on to the thread and slowly pull it through. There we go. We've got one little eye. So let's go ahead and do the second one. Okay. We have our eyes, we have our ears pinned, we have our top body pinned. It's time to go to the sewing machine and sew these guys together. Okay, we've sewn our ears together and the back of our mouse together. We've turned inside out, our ears inside out and pressed them. And then we put them towards, what we did was we folded them towards the center. And I just did a little stitch really close to the edge to just keep them in place because when I sew this onto the body of the mouse I don't want the ears flopping open and I don't want to have to put a lot of pins when I sew the ears and the face and the body together. So what we do is we have the body and then we have our little ears. We place them like this and what I do is I use this center seam from our top and I line it up like so and I put them right next to each other because I don't want them to get caught in the stitch when we stitch together the bottom and the top of the mouse. And then I have my cute little head, if you remember, with the eyes and I put that on top. 
And you, what you can do is you can pin them onto this first and then pin your head on. Um, it's whatever you're comfortable doing. So now I have the head, the ears in between with the light part facing up, and the top of the mouse with the right sides of the, the two pink colors facing each other. Now I'll take my pin and just pin that down. And, and by the way, it's okay if these little triangles hang off the edge. You won't see that when you put the mouse together. It's just excess fabric. I pin that together. Really, you don't need that many pins. You can if you feel more comfortable doing so, but it's pretty stable. And so what I'll do is I'll sew one fourth inch along here. Let's see, like so. sure my edge meets. And it might be a little bulky, just go slowly. Back stitch. The strings. And then it's starting to look like a little mouse. We've got our ears here and we've got our head. And then next step is to press down this towards the center. And then we're going to sew the tail and the bottom to our mouse. Okay, this mouse is really starting to take shape now and I'm getting really excited. This is the fun part is making it all come together. So I have the top of my mouse with his little ears and his eyes and I have the bottom of the mouse. I used a darker color, you can use whatever color. And then for his tail I have a one inch flat bias tape that I've folded over and sewn. And what we're going to do is pin this guy all together. This can get a little tricky. So this is 14 inches long. It can be any size you want. And if you're going to attach it to your kitty catty, then um, that'll determine the size that you're going to use. So I am going to fold it like this because I don't want it coming towards the edges because I don't want to sew the the bias tape right here. I just want to sew that back piece. So I'm going to place, this is where it gets a little tricky, but it's not that bad. I promise. I promise. So see what I've done here? I'm trying to line it up as best I can. Line that tail up in the back and I'll pin that first. Then I'll pin the head. Okay, and we got our sides. And just making sure that, that that bias tape is still folded in there like that because I don't want it to come to the edges. Okay, you can feel that tail in there. It's all folded up. Everything else is smooth around the mouse. We're going to take this to our sewing machine and sew one fourth inch around the whole mouse, leaving mm, a little space open, inch and a half or so, whatever you feel comfortable with, to turn our little guy inside out. Let's go to the sewing machine. It's time to turn our little mouse inside out and see what he looks like. So we made our hole right here. And what we'll do is, as always, I like to take my thumb and work at the point here where our little mouse nose is and pull him through and kind of push out that nose and look at him. Look at him come out and then slowly pull it out. There's that tail and look at it still folded. So we did a good job not sewing it into our seams. <gasps> And look, there's our little mouse. Okay, everything looks great. Poke out the little ears. And the next step is to really make our little mouse come alive. And that's by adding polyfill. I like to use my Silky Soft. And again, I like to take a little bit at a time and just poke it in there with my hands. 
I like my stuffed items to be firm, so I'm always going to use a lot of polyfill. And I start at the nose again. And also, if you're not happy with the no if you feel like it's too rounded, you can take your crochet hook and push it out a little bit more. Sometimes that really gets it out. And then also pushing the polyfill in there as you do it. Look at that. So cute. Okay. Add some more. Push it down in there. I'm really getting it in there. Okay. I'm happy with how firm it is. You can see. And so we have this opening. And what you can do is you can go ahead and whip stitch that up by hand. Like so. And you just pinch the seams like so. And then whip stitch the side. We've got this tail. It's awfully long. You can keep it long or you can cut it shorter and tie a little knot at the end or you can attach it to your kitty catty as we have shown before and um, use it as a pin cushion on there. My pattern for this mouse as well as the kitty catty is on my blog. Go check it out.